This video is going to be about the sound on the Kiara Scale Class 37. Before I start though, I think a lot of people are going to wonder why I'm trying to improve the sound at all. So to give you a bit of background, these are some of the models which I've done in the past using an EM2 speaker, which is a bigger version of the speaker that a Kiara Scale use. Uh, this requires the chassis on most models that it goes into to be milled and it takes quite a lot of work. Um, so it's not something that most people will have heard in the past. So I'm going to play you some clips of one of my EM2 fitted models and then we'll try and improve the Akira scale one afterwards. Akira scale use what they call an Akira thrash speaker. Most of you probably already knew this is an EM1 speaker, which is the smaller version of the speaker which was used in the model in the previous clip. They also use a sugar cube speaker similar to the one in the picture. The purpose of the sugar cube speaker is supposed to be to improve the treble response of the sound. One thing that I find interesting about this speaker setup is that ESU recommend using a speaker range of between 4 and 8 ohms. But using these two speakers in parallel as they're wired at the moment gives a reading of around 2.5 ohms, which is too low, and you'd expect that to cause damage to the decoder. So I assume that they've done the research on this and that it's okay. I think one of the ways that they've got around this is to use quite a quiet sound file, and this stops it from overloading the decoder. On my model, the horns are quite crackly, and this sound was clearly coming from the sugar cube speaker. The first thing I wanted to do was to remove the sugar cube speaker. This is located at the same end as the decoder, but it's underneath the circuit board. So the easiest way to get it out is to take out the four screws which hold on the circuit board, and then take out the two screws which hold the sugar cube speaker, and you just need to lift up the circuit board a tiny little bit so that you can slide the sugar cube speaker out and it can come out of either side and you don't need to do anything to block up the part where you took it from um, you just leave it as it is once it's taken out. Once the speaker's out you've got the added benefit of being back to 4 ohms which is the minimum recommended by ESU. This means that you can start to increase some of the individual volumes which is what I'm doing here. I use a lock programmer so I do it differently to how most people would but you can do this by changing CVs as well. You don't want to go too high with the volumes because if you go too high you might start having other problems. Um, you don't want to be pushing it up to 200% definitely because ESU don't really recommend that anyway. But you can certainly go to sort of 150, maybe even slightly higher because as I say this was quite a quiet sound file compared to others. I settled for a final value of 224 for the engine. With this new setup, the horns have stopped crackling and the model's also slightly louder, which is one of the things that I was hoping to achieve.
Next I wanted to try a different speaker completely, so I've used this new speaker from ESU, which is what they've developed to replace the EM1. And the thinking behind this is that it's got slightly better treble and mid-range response, but without losing too much of the bass, which is what the EM1 is famous for. Luckily this speaker is quite a similar size, um, it fits into the same space and uses the same mounts as the EM1 or the Akira Thrash speaker which is already in this model, so it was nice and easy to change over. When I first used it I used exactly the same settings as what I just used in the EM1 demonstration, um, but that were way too loud so I quickly had to stop this because I was going to possibly damage the speaker. and I've reduced the overall volume using CV63 down to 120 um, but when you look at the actual levels of the sound it's about the same overall you'll probably notice that the horns are slightly louder than they were before and I think this is one of the reasons that ESU felt like they could improve the EM1 speaker At this point you're probably wondering whether any of this has been worth the effort. I think the honest answer is probably not. What we're hoping to do is make this sound closer in quality to the EM2 speaker which I've got in some of my Batman and Vitrans models, but in reality the speaker that's in here is just a little bit too small to get that kind of amount of bass. It still sounds good, um, but it's just never going to get quite to that level. It would be very hard to put a speaker like that into this model because of the amount of rewiring that you'd have to do once you took the circuit board out, so it's not something that I'm going to try and do, but I am happy with it. I definitely prefer the model without the sugar cube speaker, I just think it sounds louder, it sounds a little bit more bassy and you definitely don't get the distortion on the horns, so that's definitely something that I'd recommend doing. I think in this case as well I prefer the EM1 of the new ESU speaker because I think it's got a little bit more bass and it seems to sound a little bit clearer to me. Um, maybe the other one sounds too clear and it causes a little bit of distortion, but I guess it's going to sound different on different models with different sound files. It's certainly a good speaker um, and it's something that will come in very useful for other things I think. I'd be interested to hear your thoughts, so please comment below if you've got any opinions on this or any questions about what I've done. I'd also appreciate if you could subscribe to my channel if you don't already and if you can like the video because it'll help more people see it.